Hey there, welcome to this series of lectures where I'm going to introduce you into ZBrush. Now, my name is Ryan Kingsline. You probably know that from the intro video, hopefully. Um, but in case you skipped right into the content here, let me just tell you a little bit about myself. I used to work at Pixelogic and uh, was part of the team that took it from ZBrush 2 to ZBrush 3 and a little bit beyond that. And uh, I've got a couple of things here inside of ZBrush. The rake brush is something I put in there. You'll also find my anatomy tool, which is going to be useful in this conversation. You go into the light box tool, and you'll see right over here I've altered it. In it but you'll see in the, um, in the light box center, you'll see my little guy right there. All right. And then if you go into some of the other areas, you'll see, like, let's say if we go into projects, and you go into mannequin, you'll find my eight head mannequin figures over here that can be very useful, very powerful to get you up to speed on uh, on posing figures. But all of that done and said, I've spent the last several years training game artists, film artists, digital sculptors, really in careers, because careers are a really big part of my life. I started as an artist when uh, there wasn't a, lot of, wasn't a lot of hope for artists, <laughs> financial hope. <laughs> and uh, digital art really changed my mind on a lot of that stuff. And I want to be able to share that with you. One of the key tools and the key things to understand when we're in ZBrush is that this has really become kind of the common language for a lot of us. Character, environments, even in effects and things like that. Uh, sculpting and working within ZBrush is really just... It's just a bit of joy in your life. And that's the goal. That's that's exactly what we strived for in my time at Pixelogic. And it's ex exactly what they have continued doing uh, since then. It's just bringing that joy, right? So let's get in and experience some of that ourselves. We're, this is I'm going to assume you're relatively new. And, you know, you, maybe you've checked out a few things. But I'm going to go through it as basic as I can. But keep focused on something that's going to give you or empower you. All right. First thing we do is we, light box is open. If it's not open, click the light box up in the upper left corner to open it. Make sure you are in the project tab. And if you see something different than this, make sure you click this little icon in the upper left of this light box interface. And that'll take you up to the higher uh, level. I'm going to use Dynamesh Sphere 128. There's going to be a lot of moments when I do things and you're like, well, what is that? What's 128? What's the 64? What's the wax? What's the this? You are going to only help yourself if you limit your focus to achieving spe what's specifically in this. So don't get sidetracked with what's 128, what's all of this stuff. I want you to step by step achieve something. Today, we just want to get in and achieve a little bit of success and have a little bit of joy sculpting now when you click that or double click it you get this little interface and you know you got a bunch of cool stuff going on you got a what appears to be a ball and a grid moving in the background the navigation is something that you can eh, you can love it you can hate it but you got to deal with it all right when i click outside and i'm working on a microsoft surface right now and so when i click outside and i click outside with my finger and i click outside with the pen i'm just rotating this around it's a little hard for you to see what's exactly happening so i'm just going to sculpt on that and then this will make it a little bit more obvious okay so all i'm doing is clicking outside left and right up and down now pretty soon you can tell this gets a little bit uneven right i'm a little off axes in there and so there's some tools and some ways that I'm going to show you to kind of get that centered. And the first thing to really show you is just if you press shift, click the button, notice how it locks into a view. It's important that you do this a specific way, though. You got to press shift, click, lift the pin, let go of shift, lift the pin, let go of shift. OK, if you do it differently, let's say if I let go of shift and I still got my pin down, it just snaps back. So you got to press shift, lift the pin, let go of shift. Go ahead and practice that here. So I'm just going to rotate this, press shift, and say, hey, I want it to be at this view. Now I'm going to lift the pin, let go of shift. Dun, dun, dun. Rotate this around towards the front view, press shift, lift the pin, let go of shift. There you go. 
All right. Now you might already caught one of the other mechanisms here, which is if you are clicking outside the model, it rotates. If you click on the model, you're sculpting. It's really cool. So one of the things that's really important about ZBrush is the experience is key, right? There's a lot of people that will talk about different software. There's Mudbox, there's Blender, and, and all of these are absolutely competition for, for ZBrush. There's 3D Coat, there's Sculptress, which is actually part of PixLogic, and, and they're all competition. But one of the things that ZBrush has done very well from the beginning is focus on just for those who are really into this, making the experience seamless and so this is this the the way in which you navigate around isn't as crazy as an engineering program which is something blender has to deal with but you know you have to make some trade-offs and uh, and one of those is some aspects of the ui that blender has that zbrush doesn't all right now all of that nonsense aside the other thing that you'll see me doing here is moving this around when we get into the moving this around and all of that you get into a little bit more you know, detail with this. And it's important that you be mind that you be aware, really, that a lot of the navigation is right here, move, zoom and rotate. So if you ever get lost, you can actually rotate it around, just click, you can move it around. And then even here, you can zoom back and forth, which is pretty cool. Okay, press F to frame it click that to zoom out and then on top of that if you come over here and hover over that little item and you press the control button on your keyboard you see it says four 3d objects in edit mode click inside the scale edit object button and drag to resize the object now i wrote quite a few of these way 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 back in the day it's a really cool system that um, zbrush has and a lot of these buttons inside here if you hover over them if you want to come over here to like this bpr and hover over it it says hey the bpr button will render any model in edit mode with real 3d shadows cool the cool thing about navigation is that it'll also tell you the hot key so to see the third paragraph it says you can also move the object by holding the alt option button clicking and dragging outside the object surface so i'm going to hold alt click and i move it around if i let go of alt i'm rotating it now i press alt nothing's happening i'm pressing alt what's going on you got to lift the pin press alt and then press the pin again it's only really going to instigate this mode when alt is pressed first and then you click there you go now, what happens if I press Alt and I'm sculpting on the surface? Ah, not Alt, Alt, not Alt, Alt. It's pretty cool how everything gets really tied into those buttons down at the bottom of the screen. Uh, but what's really happening there is not as, you know, it's just, it's real basic, basically. You've got a Z add, which is a plus mode, and you've got a Z sub, which is a minus mode. And even though the interface doesn't necessarily update when you press Alt, I'm in Z sub mode, and I let go of Alt, and I'm in Z add mode. Okay. Now, you undo is the same as most programs. Control Z. There you go. And by default, this comes in with symmetry, but you could accidentally press X on the keyboard and lose symmetry. If you do, undo back to the state that you were at and press X or come to transform and hit activate symmetry. All right. Now, that's a little bit of fun I want you to have just messing around with this to kind of see what you can come up with. And uh, you can do these kind of weird little blobs, <laughs> whatever the pronunciation of that is. Um, we could come in. I'm going to undo. And I'm just going to use this simple brush right now. I'm not going to do anything kind of special or crazy. I'm going to introduce this to you in another video. But let's say if you just want to come in and do something like this and get a sense of the pressure sensitivity and also get a sense of sculpting, right? And one of the tips I'm going to give you is sculpting's not about the lips. If you're in one of my classes, I'd say that's not what we do. We don't sculpt lips. What you got to learn and you got to develop a capacity in is sculpting the underlining form and making sure that you're aware of structure. As I'm sculpting in here, though, one of the things that starts to happen is it starts to get messy, very messy. And 
you can see me pressing S and changing my draw size. You can also change your draw size up here at the top. Press S on your keyboard and you get your draw size there. Mess, 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 right? Watch what happens here when I do one thing. I'm going to press the shift button while my object is, while my cursor is over the object. Notice how it changes color and it goes blue. And then I'm just going to click on the surface and I'm going to smooth it all out. There you go. Smooth it all out. So press S to adjust the draw size. I'm going to press Alt to carve in. Then I'll do a little bit more and a little bit more. Then I'll press Shift and I'll smooth this thing and see if I can't do something kind of fun. Now that I've got a shape here, I might come in and say put a little line in there for the lips. And as I put a line in there, I might put the marionette line in there, right? Don't worry if this is all kind of new to you. This is just the stuff I've been doing this for a really long time. This is just, I'm just having fun sculpting some anatomy and, and getting some shapes in there. Okay, and then once we have this kind of locked in a little bit more, then we'll come in and say, okay, let's get that corner of the mouth. And the idea with this kind of sculpting is you come in and you kind of build form slowly and you have it kind of melt into into the shape that you want. And it can be, a, uh, hit no on that, it can be a lot of fun to just slowly develop shapes that um, that will ultimately be your figure, your character. And we're just doing these inside of a ball. Notice how as I change the draw size, I get harder and sharper edges in some places. That can be quite useful. And there you go. All right, just have a little bit of fun. See if you can do something. And see if you can push yourself to think outside of mouth, eyes, and start to see the form underneath. Start to look at this like not a, not a, a person who's looking at these data points but you start to see the structure underneath all of this to start to develop and design your own entity you see all this work i'm putting in doing this underlining structure and I'm, i've got these lines i put in right there there we go you know these lines that i'm putting in are the key to developing a mastery with 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 anatomy you know can anatomy you got to remember is just form and you know it's something you have to ultimately learn because we're not we don't see artistic anatomy in general we see data points and that's the way our eyes operate but you now you're on this journey to being an artist a sculptor you got to start to think about and see form differently see beyond the way other people see it. Start to see it at a higher level. Okay, I'm going to increase this. and If you increase the draw size, you get more, a larger result out of these. There you go. Oops, I don't want that. So I undo. There you go. All right, a couple more tools I can introduce you to, but go in and have some fun with the standard brush and with this little bit of clay and push yourself as a sculptor.